Welcome to Tubescape, my name is Cameron and this is part three, or the final episode actually, in our Great Guitar Build-Off 22 competition entry, which is an electro-acoustic guitar, sort of like a nylon string hybrid. Uh, anyway, very exciting and we finish it in this episode and it uh, turned out great, I'll show you soon. And um, we're going to do a little bit of a sound demo at the end as well. But in this episode, we sculpt the neck, we fit it to the body, uh, we finish the guitar, we coat it, and uh, the timber changes colour pretty dramatically. We also make tuning knobs, new tuning knobs for the tuners. They look fantastic. Uh, everything just turned out really well. So let's go and have a look. Got some masking tape here. This is where the neck block fits on. I don't want to go near that. This is 40 grit, so it should really carve it up. I, I haven't even started and I've got dust in my eyes already. I know this would probably be faster with the uh, grinder with the disc on it, but the smoke shape's got to be my favourite tool. So I'm just enjoying myself. I still got about seven millimetres to go down. It's going to take a while. But Meanwhile, I'm getting these beautiful shavings with these multicolour stripes. Just look great. That's a good glue job. Hey, <laughs> good joint. Pretty happy with that. 21.2. We are 21 point or 21 on the first right on the first fret. 21 right on the second fret. 21.2. Two on the third fret. Still got a few marks, got to get out. Got to get these bits out and that bit there. It's getting there. Take it out again so we can put some glue in there. Just got to be a little bit careful when I do this. Getting close to the finish now. Alright. Alright. Fortunately, this thing just fits in without any real pressure, so. place or not. You can usually feel the, the lugs. Damn, the, uh, the glue is making it so I can't find them. There they are. 
Okay. I've got foam underneath, so even though it looks like I'm putting a lot of weight on. Make a piece of cardboard, which goes on there. No, it doesn't. That goes underneath. I had the had that on there. Twenty four hours to dry. All clamped in. Great clamp that by the way. And um yeah. Yeah. Alright. There we have it. Neck is on. Yay! So the neck had a little bit of back bow in it, which I've now straightened out using the truss rod. And frets. That's one, that's zero fret, one, two, so fret three, four, five, seven, eight, oh, eight's probably right, three, four, three, four, seven, ten, three, four, seven, and ten are a little bit low, but I can't do much about it because I've got to have the zero fret in contact, that's the main thing, so we'll put our, um, Texts are on top of all the frets. Yes, it can. Yep. How can it be? Yeah, everywhere else it's fine, it's just right on the end. Well, I should be able to just focus on that end. Yeah, I think we finally got, got it. We've leveled the frets, now we're going to do a crown and then a polish. So a crown is using a file like this, with it's had the uh, file bits ground off the edges so you don't damage your fretboard. And you basically run them along on each side of the fret because the top of the frets are flat now. So we're just gonna make them into a, a point, or not really a point, but a, a thinner line on top. And then after that, we'll polish them up and, and round them over a little bit so that uh, we don't have big flat spots on top. and. Um, just makes them look nicer really you don't have to do it you could just play it like this um, but they don't don't look as good I guess uh, and it is a little bit more accurate if you can thin the tops of them off a little bit some people like them really pointy at the top uh, some people hate it so it's just a matter of preference really so I'm using this little metal guard between the frets like so and then I can work on the fret edges, just sliding this along, which we'll do do now. I'll do a close up for you. Just basically do this. So I've got the metal thing on here to protect the fretboard. I'll basically just keep the top of this flat, and then I'll get that angle on the sides of the fret here. a little bit. It looks like it's not actually doing much so I might actually have to uh, tilt this in a bit much. It's not really touching much on here. The only trouble with these steel guard things, these they pick the fretboard but they also have a little bit of height. <laughs> I can see it's taking a little bit off. I'm gonna have to tilt this in more to get it to do some more. Yeah these things have a bit of thickness unfortunately and they uh, can in some ways prevent the file from getting into it. Now normally if you've got a radius fretboard you have to sort of angle up and angle down and sort of follow the curvature of the fretboard. 
This is a flat fretboard because it's sort of mimicking a uh, classical guitar sort of thing. So I'm hoping you can see, these are the two frets I've done, the zero fret and the first fret. And here's the second fret. So hopefully you can see there's a big difference. These two here we're comparing, right? So depending on the angle I get, you'll see that the top on the left one should be quite thin compared to the right. The right should have quite a flat top, whereas this one here will have a... The one on your left should have a quite a thinner top. So I'm now going to polish the frets using my Ryobi rotary tool. This one's battery powered. You used to be able to get an electric uh, you know, plug-in powered one, which is what I wanted. The uh, battery discharges continuously while it's plugged in, so it's a bit of a problem. A bit of a fault, really. But other than that, it's a great little thing. Uh, I really like having the cord as a permanent fixture. So we're just going to use that wheel, buff it at high speed with the compound. I've got everything covered because polish spinning on a high speed wheel knows no boundaries and it gets everywhere, so you've got to protect everything. So I've finished polishing, cleaning up a little bit, and I'm quite happy with them. They look uh, pretty good and uh, all of that the only thing I can feel still here on the edges it's a little bit rough just right on the edge there I haven't done my final sand yet so when I do the final sand with uh, high grade sandpaper that should uh, take care of that I didn't round the frets with a file but I did round the ends uh, with the polishing wheel so I think if I just lightly sand this now that should be uh, that should be it ah, go on. We're off. I think I must be channeling Ben Crow because at the last minute, there's not much time left in the competition, I've decided I want to change the tuning knobs from this perlite white, which would be okay if I had other white perlite in the build, to match the rest of the build. So I've, I've got these couple of Neapolitan bits here of timber that I've made up. So we've got uh, blackwood wattle, maple and the walnut. And I'm going to basically drill the hole through here for that and sculpt it and have a bunch of them like that. Now, <laughs> as I was going, oh, I've got to drill the hole in now because I've got this to the right size. So it's a, as you see, round hole there. But the other side is square. Well, it's actually round on the ends and flat in the middle. So it's 2.5 mils across the middle and 3.5 mils across the ends. And this hole here is 2 mils. So this 2 mil hole goes for 5 millimetres through this and then the other 10 mils, because these are about 15 mils high, the other 10 mils is that sort of a square hole. So I think the only way that I can do it, because I think it, this hole's too small for me to like chisel out or anything or, or file even, the only way I think I can do it, and I can't, I, and I can't use like even a, a, uh, a jeweler's saw because I need this hole to stay 2 millimetres. So I think the only way I'm going to be able to do it now is drill a 2, two mil hole all the way through and then for this 10 mils drill a 3.5 mil hole and then fill in the flat bits to make them flat, like slide in little bits of timber and glue them in to try and get that flat bit, which obviously enables this to grip and turn, turn the uh, actual bolt. So I've made things a little more complicated. I thought I was going to have this done in no time, but yeah. Got to try and uh, get this fish for the competition finishes or <laughs> kind of. <laughs> anyway. all the way through let's see how we went on the other side and we are through the center fantastic
from the on that. I'll do the underneath first. And we'll put it on its little thingy here. And we'll do the rest then. Too deep, but we're not too shallow. A bit of glue in there. I don't want it like right at the top. We'll put a little glue to glue in there first. Oops, I'm trying to unscrew it, but it's actually just a pop off. It's not screw it. I forgot about that. All right, so now we'll just. Fairies did tell me not to use too much. They said, don't use too much. I can't think of it. <laughs> now I'm trying to think of a reason why the fairies would have said that, and I can't think of one, so the joke's ruined. So I'm just pushing the sparkles in so they go into the... Because I'll be floating a little bit on top of some, uh, some glue there at the moment. So I like to put a little bit of glue in first, just to uh, fill it up and coat it a little bit. All right, I'll do that for now, and then we'll come back and we'll probably we'll put I'll just dust it off and we'll put some glue on the top in a second. So I can see the glue, but it's still a fair way down. Via, what do you call it? It's basically siphoning itself out of the bottle. I'm not actually squeezing it at all. Well, I suppose I had it tipped up as well, so it's, but I guess it's just tipping out of the bottle. Okay. Now, yeah, I'm not going to sand that glue off. I'm just going to let that glue settle. Because I did. This is the second go. I had a little bit of go, not with the sprinkles, but just with the, the sawdust before, and I found that tried to get the blobs of the glue off and it just sucked out all the, the sawdust out of there as well. So I'm just going to let that sit there. If it leads a lump that's fine because I do have to sand it and just clean up the frets a little bit anyway. So I'm going to let that dry naturally. Alright, apologies for the audio. Um, it's raining. I'm just going to, I'm going to put linseed oil on. I'm going to do the headstock first. And just both sides of headstock and that's it. I'm going to let the headstock dry, maybe put a couple of coats on, because I'm going to hang it up by the headstock when I coat the rest of it. So I'm going to do the headstock first. I want to get in, in here, and I'm going to use a brush to get in there rather than paper, because I think it's going to be too hard. So <laughs> Yeah, so there. Oh, wow, that looks nice, doesn't it? With the uh, yeah oh yeah that looks good okay now I don't know if it's going to get in or not because I did is this sanded to 400 grit so it's quite sanded oh yeah that looks bloody nice very nice eye okay Do another coat on my um, tuning knobs. They've had two coats already.
This is not going to be perfect, that's for sure. There's scratches and dents and stuff because I just, the conditions I've got, which uh, you know, as you can see, I don't have places to store things or put things or do anything, so. All right, so the guitar is hanging from the roof by a wire and some uh, paracord I've woven through the tuna peg hole. Uh, as you can see, my garage is pretty, my shed here is pretty small. I'll get, let you see a little bit of the neck and a bit of the body. I can't get the camera any further back and I can't zoom out any further. So that's kind of it. So there's the back. We'll be coloring that. Wait, fungus won't grow on or whatever. Anyway, we've got pale boiled now. Let's see what it does, since it's facing you, let's see what it does to a bit of maple. As expected with maple, not much, just makes it go a little bit yellow. <laughs> Although, I, when, I, when you put oil on maple, one thing I, I have noticed is it does bring out the figuring in the maple, it makes it stand out a bit more. Let's see what this stuff comes out like. This is the uh, Tasmanian Blackwood. Or I call it Blackwood Waddle because that's what it's called where I, where I come from. It's native to uh, where I live here in Victoria. But it's uh, also of course native to Tasmania. Needs a temperate climate. Basically, <clears throat> this uh, blackwood is really absorbing a lot of oil, so the timber is obviously quite porous. I need to put a lot on the cloth. things go way better than you thought they would and other things that you thought were great turn out to be not that good. It's like I'm doing part of the neck now, doesn't it? Doesn't look like I'm doing see there difference in colour again. It's not as pronounced here where it's I guess the grain is tighter because this is sanded to a much higher degree than the top and bottom are. Six coats of linseed oil, one coat per day. So it took six days to do it, and I've left it for two days to dry. I don't know how it's looking to you right now, but. Uh, it should have like a very light sort of a sheen on it, not really, it's sort of matte I guess, but has a light sheen. You can see the sound hole there, kind of freaky looking, there's the bridge, closer up. And 
uh, that part there. We've got a bit of glue in there showing up. I couldn't really get rid of it. That's the uh, that thing, whatever you call it. setting up the brass saddle and uh, I've put a blue texture mark here that's where the g-string is the g-string is a little bit sharp on the when I play it on the 12th fret which means I need to lengthen the string a little bit to flatten it off and so I'm just gonna move you can probably see this a line here where the strings will come on and then the string will like, go off it's a little bit too big I have to narrow it so on this where the G-string is, I'm going to file it back a bit and have the string leave towards the back of this section. And all the other strings are really good, so I'm going to sort of file off mostly off the back and have them leave near the front of that section. Hope that makes sense. You're going to be a luthier dog. You're not interested, are you? What do you want to come up here for? Yeah, you see? Yeah. Filing, huh? So I finished intonating the saddle, so that's the top, so it sits, uh, well that's looking at it from the neck, and that's looking at it from the back, that's the underneath, and that's the top. You love linser, all don't you? in the shed and she's in there, I'd spilled some linseed oil on the floor and even though I'd wiped most of it up, she's still licking it trying to get the linseed oil. <laughs> she uh, quite likes it. So I'm going to have to watch with this guitar that she doesn't lick it too much. It has had a chance to oxidise a little bit now and it's looking a bit more sort of brassy, which is good because that's what we want. We want the brass look. slides up the string but once you put the peg in it knocks it down so that's alright. Alright, there we go. Hi, the guitar is basically finished um, but it's not really finished. <laughs> so let me explain. There it is in all its glory. So um, it's beautiful, very earthy guitar, earthy feeling, earthy look, I think. Uh, you can probably see a bit more detail here. I haven't cut the strings yet, and the reason I haven't cut the strings off yet is because the action's too low. So, uh, I haven't, uh, actually I haven't tuned it this morning. Uh, if you hear the buzzing, now it's buzzing, now it's buzzing a little bit, a tiny bit, that one's alright, and that one's alright. I'm going to put the strap button on now, but I'm going to have to make a new saddle. So there's our, our saddle that we had, and uh, 
It's cool, but it's just a little bit low. I thought that the body would kind of lift a little bit, you know, like it would get a bit of a bulge here, and I would have about a millimeter extra. In fact, this stayed completely flat and it's dead level. <laughs> and actually, I made it probably too strong. And uh, I allowed for a little bit of lift, but there's no lift. It may lift over time, I don't know. But uh, so, if it does, I'll put this setup back in. But I'm going to make a new one. I have got another piece of brass that's a bit taller, and I'll use that. But for now, we're just going to put the strap button on. bought some replacement strings, some classical uh, M160s from Martin. I took the chair, opportunity to polish up the uh, the new saddle, so it's all sparkly now, so I'll slide that in. And also you can see the new saddle here, you can see that it's, it's higher on the bass string side than it is on the treble string side, and the G string is lengthened for intonation, because it needed it on the intonation. So whack that in, I'll put the new strings in, and uh, so what I have done, apart from that, even with this new saddle in, I'm still getting buzzing. I'm pretty sure it's these lower frets. So what I've gone and done, I have gone and basically done a leveling job from the 14th fret back. I've just basically sanded them down quite a lot. All right, so we've just finished, put the new saddle in, and I have lowered the frets 14th and lower and just checking now the intonation so we've got an E an E A A oh, D looks like it's maybe a little low D the tune is changing a bit so that the strings are new set of strings because the old ones actually kind of got destroyed with me taking everything on and off all the time. So G's good as well. So the G was the one we had to change the saddle intonations position. And a B, E, there we go. So they all intonate perfectly according to uh, <laughs> my phone and this program. <laughs> Uh, I should say what I'm using. Uh, what's it called again? It's really good. Uh, Smart Chord. Uh, free download while well, you can make a donation. And uh, yeah, very, very good. Thought I'd show you that and uh, the new bridge. It's a little got some fingerprints and stuff on it, but I made it all, uh, all shiny now. Okay, I'll, I'll stop when I stuff it up because I will stuff it up. Well, <laughs> sped up, slowed down, stuffed it up, but anyway, it's a classical piece at least. And of course, um, nylon was favoured by the Ramones, as we all know, and they used to play with the fingernail like this as well. It's a little, little note of that.
for watching that series. I hope you enjoyed it, and if you did, please consider giving the video a thumbs up because it does help the channel. I've got to try and get to a thousand subscribers before YouTube will pay me anything for any videos. <laughs> I'm close to a hundred, so if you could hit the subscribe button, that would help me out as well. Um, and we'll have more stuff coming up, more guitar making, but more woodworking. Also, I'm thinking about making a bow, um, and I'm going to fix the tuners on the uh, multi-scale guitar there as well. Stuff like that, so if you're interested in seeing all that sort of stuff, consider subscribing. And um, other than that, have fun.